Hey folks, Ken MacArthur here, best-selling author of Impact, How to Get Noticed, Motivate Millions, and Make a Difference in a Noisy World. Great to have everybody on the call today. And if you happen to be on social media, now would be a good time to let other people know about this amazing time that we're going to spend together with Mitch Axelrod. Uh, my good friend and brilliant mind. I'm going to actually type into the chat area the link that you can uh, invite people to. It's just KenMcArthur.com forward slash open. Uh, but go out there on the social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you've got an audience for. Tell people to come join us because uh, the more um, we can touch people, uh, the more people that we can touch, uh, the more impact that we can have and um, we're going to talk a little bit about that today about creating massive impact and also about creating uh, profits both from your intellectual property and how you run your business uh, I know I mentioned today in my um, uh, to my subscribers um, how um, how dedicated I am and how focused I am right now on helping people to move up a level in their business uh, to really take it as a business because so many times even if we're uh, somebody that is typically a lifestyle entrepreneur what we call a lifestyle entrepreneur we love the freedom of being uh, uh, able to work when we want to work and not have uh, huge staffs and all of those kinds of things if you want to build a sustainable business over time you have to actually build a real business you have to be serious about it you have to put the work in you got to think about the long term for that to have the vision that you want to have last because there are opportunities out there every single day and we see opportunities come right and left at us you know <laughs> we're, we're presented with thousands of opportunities every single day but opportunities are just that they're opportunities they're things that come and go and change and it's those bright shiny objects that capture our attention but if you want to build a, a really really solid business that's a whole nother animal and our um, our wonderful guest today has had a lot of experience uh, with building businesses and helping businesses to really increase their profits and to increase the impact that they have uh, and a lot of that's been done through the creation of intellectual property and how you use that to leverage um, Mitch and I are going to be doing something really really special with our impact players uh, group that's a new group of people that are dedicated to moving their uh, business up to to a higher level to having a real business that uh, that really makes a huge difference and I'm just gonna uh, quickly before uh, anything else before um, before I do something with uh, with Mitch here I'm gonna talk uh, just a little bit about what that might look like in your business and uh, you know kind of what your impact action plan might be because for so many people I think we don't realize all of the different things that we can do to really fine-tune what a business might be or to fine-tune uh, all of the different aspects that uh, we might be touching on because so many times we're looking at the immediate stuff that just kind of hits us in the in the face and uh, every day we're we're uh, standing up and we're getting slapped down here and there as uh, time goes by but really if we get clarity at the very beginning uh, that's going to make a huge difference in the level of success particularly if we're in it for the long run so I I put kind of at the top of my list uh, and I encourage you to do this for for your um, for your business to get clarity on a couple of things uh, first of all get clarity on who you are and there's a couple of, of uh, sub things below that you know who are you right now is one question you may want to ask and then who do you want to be because we're not always acting out our dreams right now we're not always acting as though we have the kind of success that we want to achieve and if you can do that if you can figure out what that is you're 
you're more likely to get there you know it's um, it's easy to stumble around in the dark and say well I kind of want this and I kind of want that I kind of want everything but if you can get clarity on who you are right now and where you want to be then at least you can head in that direction and heading in the right direction really shortens up the time frame of getting success and results and the second question is you know what do you want to do you know I use the ex the expression all the time uh, you know what do you want to do when you get up in the morning is kind of the big question for me do you want to be speaking in front of a crowd of thousands of people do you want to be writing uh, something that's going to change the lives of, of uh, incredible numbers of people or do you want to be focused on details do you want to be uh, pouring over data and looking for those secret little adventures that can really maximize your profits and make a huge huge difference in your bottom line uh, for some people that's a that's a treasure uh, hunt that's uh, that's fun and exciting and and for other people maybe not so much you know maybe we don't want to be staring at uh, reams of data so it just depends on you and what your goals you know why do you want to do this in the first place why do you want to achieve certain things um, and and then can we put some kind of a measure to that uh, can we actually um, uh, you know quantify it can we say what you know um, who who do you want to do the the particular actions you know uh, how do you want to do it um, and when do you want to do it maybe right now is not the best time for you to do it you know and then think about what your bigger mission is and the second step that I have in my overall kind of a vision is uh, creating value you know uh, so many times we think that uh, that we need to just go out there and make money for the purpose of making money but if we aren't creating real value in what we're doing we aren't going to last for the long term so you know I encourage people to you know if you want to have a big impact solve a big problem if you can solve the problem of death for instance <laughs> you you could probably have a pretty big uh, impact in the world or if you could solve the problem of of cancer you know if you could cure cancer that would that would uh, that would be a, a pretty big impact uh, and just solving a big problem um, is something that's going to have a, a big impact just by the fact that you're solving a, something that's a huge problem for lots of people um, and you can aggregate you know that's where joint ventures really come in a lot you can uh, pull together resources from lots of different sources and having resources together in a easy to use format or in a collection of resources that uh, that uh, can have a bigger impact by aggregating things we can we can have an amazing impact that maybe we weren't thinking about so if you look outside of what your particular possessions are right now if you look uh, outside of uh, what you have to offer and start looking at what other people have to offer then you can aggregate resources together and you can collaborate with people you know you can you can bring more value to the table you can lower your costs you can make something easier to use you can create more variety uh, maybe you make a better design you know Apple certainly made a better design in lots of the products that it produced uh, and that has a measurable impact on their bottom line if you increase the quality of it if you offer more for less or you educate people or you transform people you know you take them from one spot and you can actually transform them into something else then that's something that will have a real value or a real impact for people um, and you know there are a lot of things like for instance creating dumb for you services that you can do and don't forget you know just pure entertainment you know just being able to make somebody laugh or or smile or sigh or remember something that's important in their life uh, those kinds of values can be huge um, so first step get clarity second step uh, create value then we really want to think about refining our message and I spend a lot of time on this and sometimes I'm really good at it and sometimes I'm really not you know and I'm t I talk to people all the time and no matter how you good you get at it you can always be better at it 
And so I've had at least two discussions today about clarity. One, the first one was with uh, Joel Kamm. We spent probably uh, half an hour talking on the phone today about getting down clarity for something that we're going to do together to be really clear so that people don't get, get confused. And when you're doing big things, it's easy to confuse people because there's so many things going on. If you were to look at this long list of things that I'm talking about here, it's easy to be overwhelmed. It's easy to be, you know, uh, just worn out just by looking at this stuff. So when you're putting your big idea out to people, you need to remember that you need to refine your message so that it's simple, so that it's intense, so that it impacts people, you know, so it just kind of slaps them in the face. <laughs> I was at a conference in New York City, and, and um, there's a book called Disrupt, uh, that maybe you want to take a look at. Um, and it's all about disrupt, disrupting the marketplace, you know. Uh, use the example, for instance, of, you know, everybody assumes that everybody wants socks that match, right? And we assume that, um, that people aren't going to buy socks that don't match. So if you go on that assumption, um, then you'll never create socks that don't match. And then of course, if you were to go out and ask uh, people, you know, uh, what's wrong with your socks? You know, what kind of problems are you having with your socks? Then you're not going to have people uh, coming up to you and saying, well, my socks match too much. <laughs> but, but the truth is that sometimes we have to be disruptive in what we do. And uh, there was a company, a whole company that was created around uh, mismatched socks. Uh, socks because it turns out that 12 year old girls kind of like mismatched socks so a whole company was actually created that uh, you couldn't buy two socks that matched none of them matched you had to buy three socks and <laughs> and none of, none of the three matched and the whole business was built around that so sometimes disruptive thinking will enable you to th to create something that people didn't imagine that they wanted or you know, people uh, couldn't possibly imagine. Um, so you want something to be intense and you want it to be memorable uh, so that people can spread the word because so many times, um, you know, we create things that people can't remember in the first place. So how are they going to tell about tell anybody else about your product or service if you can't make it simple enough and memorable enough that uh, somebody can actually repeat that to somebody else. And you may want to go out and actually do the exercise of going up to somebody, telling them about your project and saying, okay, now repeat it back to me. What's, what is my project? And see what kind of answer you get back because if they can't even repeat it back to you moments after you've told it about them, how's it going to stick in their head? And the way our brains work, you know, the best things that uh, stick in our head, our, our brains are wired to remember pictures. Uh, so pictures really stick in our head and enable us to, uh, to have things remembered. So if you are thinking about uh, the ways to get thing, uh, you know, your message to stick, why not create a simple chart or a, a simple visual that really pulls everything together? Uh, because if you do that uh, and you leverage pictures uh, in a way that will help people to remember those things, then you'll be able to get those uh, pro prospects to tell other people about whatever you're offering. And, uh, you know, when we get other people talking about what we're doing, then it spreads so much uh, more rapidly. We can hit the viral coefficient and things really, really take off for us. And that's what leverage is all about, is creating something that somebody is going to be able to talk about and is going to want to spread to the world. Part of how we do that is we do that through emotional ties, you know. We, we're all creatures of emotion. Uh, I was with a very, very tough group of, of corporate types, and they're very bottom line oriented, but the messages over and over again that I heard yesterday in in from you know fortune 500 companies was how much we need to refine our messages so that they are emotionally impactful so that uh, we can engage our teams and work together with uh, people our customers 
uh, so that they can be emotionally vested. So we need to be able to stand for something, you know, and we need to make those messages repeatable so other people can actually say them uh, to other people. Um, and then you need to work on building your audience, and we talk about you know defining your audience, who those who that audience is. If you don't have a clear picture, you can create a, an avatar in your mind of who that ideal customer might be. Uh, maybe it's a particular personality type. Maybe it's somebody who has a particular set of interests. Maybe it's uh, somebody that has a certain income level. You should know exactly who that person is. That is your ideal audience, because if you actually define what that audience is you can go out there and then identify who your audience is and find those people uh, and then you can start identifying some key influencers within that uh, community because as people we tend to clump into groups and we we tend to get leaders out of those groups so if you can possibly uh, you know, identify exactly who your audience is, you go out and find them, and then you start looking for the leaders within that audience, then you can motivate those people, and you can expand your audience that way, and that's a huge, huge step up in the ladder. But of course, you need to evaluate your own needs in this, you know, you need to support your mission all the way along the way, so that you can know what your bottom line is because if uh, if you don't you know <laughs> often often the the example is used if you uh, want to help the poor don't become one of them is the first step so you need to be able to support your mission to identify what your needs are you need to learn how to convert that value into um, you know, financial and other uh, resources and assets that will allow you to sustain this over a period of time so that you can broaden your base, so that you can then develop even more diversified income streams and so that you can protect, you know, uh, what your do downside might be because uh, success goes up and down over the years. If you think that success just goes up, up, up in a straight line, then you've got a lot of think coming to you. So limit your downside. Uh, part of what you do that, the part of the way that you do that is to diversify your income streams, broaden your base, uh, you know, get high conversions, and then identify really exactly what you need so that you know. And then, you know, so mu many of us forget to assess our pro um, our our progress through this. You know, we don't use any kind of a measure to determine whether or not we're successful or not. Uh, and so I'm going to encourage you to use a touchstone. If you don't know what a touchstone is, basically it's a comparison, something that you can have your goals and your mission, and then you can actually touch, um, you, you can have an evaluation of whether or not a particular action is, uh, is meeting those goals. And then, of course, test, test, test. And then uh, your next step, if you aren't totally overwhelmed yet, is to broaden your communications channels. And there's a lot of potential communications channels for you now. It used to be that if you wanted to reach an audience, you know, you, go, you bought very, very expensive television time. They were all there waiting for you. But now the communication channels are huge. There's PR, there's radio, television, social media, there's publishing of all kinds, you know, books, Kindle, uh, magazines, you know, offline magazines, online magazines, blogs, newsletters, information products, you know, video stuff. Uh, there's uh, trailers that you can create. You can create YouTube videos. You can create training videos. You can do a feature film, a documentary, or short films. You can do live events, conferences, workshops, masterminds, all that kind of stuff. You can do speaking, platform selling. You can do advertising, you know. So many of us all all uh, forget that one of the ways to go out and find an audience is to pay for it. So you can use uh, pay-per-click, you can use CPA offers, you can use uh, you know all kinds of different things from sponsorships to contests to be able to uh, you know um, really leverage what you're doing. And of course you can use licensing, collaborative licensing, uh, you know, not selling products but going out and selling your intellectual property, which um, which Mitch is really a master of, and then distributive kinds of licensing so that you can distribute your materials out to tons and tons of people. And of course there's mobile. 
Now, I just touched on just a few things, and I've run already for 20 minutes. Uh, I haven't even talked about leveraging your impact, you know, how you break the viral coefficient uh, barrier, the launch tactics that are so important, how you maximize your efficiency and systematize processes that are working and automate things, and how you really m mold a legacy to last beyond one life. But that's some of the things that Mitch and I really, really want to delve down into to be able to identify uh, ways that we can help you. Because if you are doing all of these things in a powerful, powerful way and you're building for the long term, you can have real impact. And that comes down to, you know, what's your impact action plan? What is your method and your best um, your best route to getting to success as fast as you possibly can. And so that was just a quick little uh, kind of an overview of some of the things that uh, Mitch and I want to be able to uh, talk to you about, teach you about, uh, help you really leverage. And I'm going to call on Mitch now, if, if I haven't run him off with all that long uh, prelude, to say, Mitch, uh, are you there? Still here. Uh, <laughs> although you did, you, you, you did give me a headache with all these things to do. I just, you know, enhanced my list by a hundred fold. Uh, so, so it, it, it's interesting, you know, when you when you think about this, you know, because so many people, you know, uh, uh, are not thinking at this level, or not really uh, thinking about doing all of these different aspects, and yet. Uh, you know, in one format or another, uh, we need to either do this, these things, these activities ourselves, or we need to find people and organizations that we can really leverage to do these things for us. Because if we want to have the biggest impact that we possibly can, you know, it's not that we all want to go out and personally do everything that I just listed, but we want to be able to be active in all of these different areas that uh, can increase our impact uh, in a way that will en enable us to do things like leverage uh, existing organizations, existing networks that already have, for instance, PR arms or already have, you know, uh, the the power of a large corporation or a nonprofit organization or networks or key influencers within those networks so that you can take what you know, what you've lived, what you've experienced, and you can really profit from that and be able, as a lifestyle entrepreneur, to have the kind of business and have the kind of impact that you really want to have. Uh, so, yeah, and, and let me, um, because actually this list makes my head hurt. <laughs> uh, and, and, and to think about doing all these things, um, I'm going to take actually a different perspective, and I think this is the beautiful thing about collaboration. Um, you've given us what amounts to, you know, a business and life game plan here. And sometimes when you look at a list of things like this, it's so overwhelming you just shut down because there's no way in a, in a hundred lifetimes you could ever get to doing all these things. Obviously, you'd have to build quite an infrastructure. But I think your, your core message is not so much that you have to do all these things, because that's literally physically impossible, but it's to get clarity around which of these things actually will I do, because they fulfill me on a number of levels. All right? This kind of comes back to the first part of this diagram, which is clarity. Right. And who, who are you? Um, and I think this is really describes almost what we're trying to do in, in facilitating this, not so much teaching, because I think everybody in the JV Alert family could contribute in a big way to the lives of everyone else in the JV Alert family, uh, because there's a, there's a wealth of wisdom trapped inside this family, uh, and just like there's a wealth of wisdom and a wealth of impact trapped inside of each of the, us, all right? And so I want to kind of come full circle back because I'm, I'm much more of a pragmatic bottom line thinker 
maybe that's what happens after 35 years of you know being in business. You're always looking. Um, you're always looking and saying, okay, what's the practical application of this? Yep. Right? Because if you if you look on the level that we're talking, we're talking about really three parts to your impact strategy. Um, impact profits, which uh, much of what you've set out to lay out here is really about how do you impact profits, right? And that's a game I've played for 25 plus years to the tune of $3 billion. So I've become very skilled at that. Um, and in some ways, I'm actually more skilled at that in helping other businesses than I am at my own. And I bet a lot of us feel that way too, is that we're so close to our own business. You know, it's like, doctor, you cannot heal thyself. <laughs> Yep. Lawyer, lawyer, you should never represent yourself, right? Why people call me in to help them negotiate deals is because I'm not them. Yeah. Some of the hardest things that we have to do, we have to do for ourselves, you know, and that kind of brings it back full circle to the beginning of clarity. Is who, who am I and what do I really want? And, and I look at it in three dimensions. Um, I want intrinsic value in life. And that's the spiritual stuff. That's the, the love of the game, so to speak. I get up and I play for the love of the game. I have a way of self-expressing. Some of us are, are in a financial situation where we don't need to make more money or we don't want to make more money. We really want to have a bigger impact. Or maybe we have books or wisdom inside of us that we want to share with the future generations or share with more of our friends and family and, and maybe even make money sharing it. All right, so there's that intrinsic level of impact, which cannot be measured in material terms. Yeah. You, know, you get letters every day from people who you serve who you know, say how you touch their lives. You can't put a dollar number on that, really. So there's that intrinsic dimension that more than ever before, people are seeking that, that conscious, compassionate level of doing business, not just the, uh, co you know, the, the competitive level. The second level is, that, that's the level I call soul, all right? It's, it's the level of loving what you do. The next level would be all the material extrinsic stuff. I call that role. And it's very important. Um, one, of the, one of the areas I, I work a lot in, and we're, I'm going to share this more as we go forward, it's very fascinating, it's powerful, it's life-changing. Axiology is the science and study of human value. Mm. It's been around for about 50 years, and no, it, I didn't invent it, although I will take credit for it. <laughs> it sounds like I invented it. Uh, but in axiology, we, we find that there's, there's these three dimensions of value. And this affects everything we do every day. And that first level of soul is, you know, people are not fulfilled in their work. No matter how much money you make, if you're not fulfilled in your work or fulfilled in your life, you can never have enough gold to overcome a lack of soul. And now it's starting to manifest more in the marketplace. You know, people are looking for meaning and relevance and purpose and, you know, that kind of stuff. The second level is the material level or extrinsic level, and that's role. That's what do you do every day. And Ken, you brought it up so, so very well. You know, if you get up every day and you do something that has meaning to you that you enjoy, your work is going to be fulfilling and you're going to do better and you're going to make more money just because you love what you do more and you feel better about serving people. All right? And that's the second dimension, the dimension of serving people. Um, and then the third dimension is that dimension of goal. It's like, where am I going? And what we know, because we've measured this, is an amazing thing. We actually have a tool that can measure this. There's a record level of goal frustration, role frustration, and soul frustration in the world right now, in the business world right now. Yep. And it's, it's exacerbated by the promises of riches by next Friday, you don't have to work, you know, sit back, plug in the system. Um, and what it's done is it's created a huge amount of goal frustration for people who are not where they think they ought to be, role frustration, and in people who are not doing what they value or valuing what they do. And then the worst of all is, and we actually can measure this in 15 minutes, amazingly, soul frustration. About 70% of the people walking around today are frustrated because they're not 
feeling expressed in their work, or they're not feeling like they're getting their book out of them, or what their message out, and that relates to the impact we've been talking about. So part of what you and I have been talking about in terms of, of the whole impact players relationship and, and, and who would really be suited for this and who would benefit from it, well, really it's people who do want to have impact in all three areas. They want more intrinsic soul satisfaction. They want more um, extrinsic role satisfaction where, you know, every day I feel good about what I do because I'm making a contribution. Um, and then there's, there's, you know, goal satisfaction too. You know, achieving your goals but not at the expense of the role and the soul, which are higher values. And so kind of coming full circle, what we're talking about with the impact players is how do you literally walk up to the center of the bullseye and go doink into the center of the bullseye of whatever target you're shooting for? And one of the pieces that we're actually going to be sharing in San Diego, I'm going to be sharing this in San Diego among four or five other different immediate profit models, is how do you identify the target doing some of what you just laid out, Ken? How do you then create a value statement in a language that reaches that target? And then how do you literally walk up to the center of the bullseye and go doink within one degree of separation, you know everybody you need to know to get to everything you want. And if you're not getting to everybody you want, or if you're not getting everything you want, it's not because you don't know them, it's because you haven't really gotten clear on what you want, which is a big challenge for me often, or you haven't languaged it in a way, as Ken said earlier, where the message is so clear you know, like who are we looking for? We're, pe we're looking for players who really want to make an impact on their profits, their IP, and their legacy, and who want more intrinsic, extrinsic satisfaction, you know, more soul, more role, more goal. So if you can, if that's all that you can do as a result of this, and really get clear about that, you're going to have a massive impact because the ripple effect and you know, the butterfly effect will, will carry you forward. So, the, so I'm going to show you on in San Diego, and we're going to record this. How do you actually go doink, you know, in whatever target? You know, how do you identify the target? How do you go doink? How do you language your message? We've done um, thousands of these message makeovers, and in five or ten minutes, you can literally transform your message. So. Just a little hitchhike off of what you said a few minutes ago, Kevin. Yeah, and, and that's so important. So, I, I, you know, I think uh, being clear, you know, about who you are, where you want to go, uh, what your goals really are, what, what uh, aspects of your goals you want to take on yourself, and what aspects of your goals you need to collaborate with, assign to, uh, employ for or or uh, outsource to uh, is a huge factor in in being able to find that success and then also you know just identifying uh, within the the thousands of potential uh, partners and and influencers that can uh, really distribute your message to distribute your intellectual property uh, who is your message, who is your, your knowledge, who is your experience going to be the most powerful for so that you can uh, have the biggest impact? And, and Ken, can I give a quick example? Yeah, please. Because this really, this, this really um, we have literally, I can give you hundreds of examples of this. When you, when you shift from vendor collect, uh, a seller mode, to collaborator mode, yeah, everything everything changes, right? You go from a, you go from essentially a win lose paradigm, um, an either or yes no paradigm, meaning they either buy what you're selling or they don't, to an endless possibility. So, and let me show you how fast and how profitable, and how much more pie can be created with one piece of intellectual property. I have an apprentice. My apprentice I'm working with has a client. The client, I may have told this story, but I, I want to retell it because it's an example of a combination of how you impact your profit 
using your intellectual property with nothing more than an idea and get paid a huge amount of money for it and have a ripple effect down the line. So his client is in the dating business and he does high-end consulting. He was charging by the hour, 300 bucks an hour, charging about six hour days, making about $1,800 a day. Good money, okay? Um, I suggested to my apprentice that what he consider is, in the marketplace he's in, which is a high-end market, people are paying for the transformation, they're not paying for the time. In other words, when you go to a doctor, uh, you don't pay for the time it takes the doctor to write the prescription. Right. What you pay for the 30 years of experience that he can in synthesize in 30 seconds and to know what prescription to write. Okay, and it's a huge distinction. So I said to my apprentice, I said, why don't you suggest to him that he go back to these very same next client and instead propose this. Say, look, I can help you create this transformation. What is that transformation really worth to you? and then quote a price based on a return on investment that that transformation, or either financially or non-financially. Bottom line is, the guy actually went back to the very next client and went from $1,800 for a day, repositioned it as a unlimited three-month access with one day together, charged the guy $34,000. Mm. That guy wrote him a check for $17,000 on the spot 50% deposit, the balance due in 90 days. Okay, He calls my apprentice. He's like through the moon. He says, I could have never even imagined charging this, let alone quoting it and getting it. He says, I'm writing you a check. And he sent him a big chunk of that money as commission. Mm. Right. So think about the ripple effect. Yeah. I gave my apprentice one idea. He passed that one idea in 10 minutes to his client. His client proposed that one idea to his client, and out of just thin air, we created 34000 for him. The client was thrilled. He got a huge return on investment. He was thrilled. My apprentice was thrilled, and we made money together all because of one idea that got transferred down the line three ways. Yeah, okay. exactly. Now, we never turned it into a product. We didn't package that idea. Right? You are sitting, we're all sitting on absolute gold when we begin to recognize that um, intellectual property is not just products and things like that. Yep. And we, we just did a, um, actually we're gonna, we, we can invite the JV Alert family to this if you want. It's, it was absolutely astounding. We, uh, we just opened up our IP licensing academy and last week we did our first coaching session. And the first coaching session was really about how do you define an inventory, your intellectual property. And we took people through an exercise. It was a two-hour coaching. It was absolutely off the charts. And the responses that we got from people were, I never knew that my work product was intellectual property. I didn't know that statistics I accumulate yeah. are intellectual property. I didn't realize my customers are intellectual property. Right? So when you begin to really look at um, the power of collaboration, all of a sudden you can create value from where there was no value, and your profits can go through the roof, and then you can replicate that and turn it into a system, turn it into a deliverable, turn it into a product, turn it into a package. In some cases, you don't even have to turn it into a product. It's actually more valuable inside your brain. Mm -hmm. All right, so so these are some real simple, you know, examples of how you know the power of transformation, uh, and also you know how leverageable and transferable these kinds of intellectual property gains are for people. Yeah, and and when you transfer your intellectual property to somebody who has massive resources and can expand uh, the reach of your ideas. Uh, you're you're able to impact thousands, uh, if not millions, of people in many many cases. Well, and this and the spinoff business from that is extraordinary. Um, I would imagine that each and every one of us, myself included, we aren't even coming close to capitalizing and monetizing just our relationships. Um, and I'll give you another example, and and just 
kind of coaching and guiding and mentoring a, a, a CEO of a company who just hooked into a mega, mega billion dollar company. And the initial approach was going to be to sell a particular offering, all right? And I suggested, well, rather than selling that offering to the company, who may have only 2,000 representatives who can buy it, the company has literally hundreds of thousands of customers. Why don't we instead talk to them about collaborating and instead of selling that to them as a customer, why don't we license it to them and allow them to use it with their customers and now all of a sudden they can reposition themselves from their core company to essentially being a profit improvement company to their customers. And I said, imagine this. And this is an iteration you're going to hear more about as we talk more about this. Um, what we've proposed for years and have helped our customers and our clients accomplish is to use us as a profit improvement strategy so their customers make enough money every year to yeah. pay for their products and services. You know, so think about your company, think about your customers, and think about your customers' customers. If you can help your customers' customers make enough money or close to enough money to pay for your customers' products and services, not only would their customers never leave them, but your customers would never leave you either. Yep. And that's the next new game, which is, you know, it's one thing to, for me to help consult with a Fortune 500 or a small business owner and help them make more money. It's a whole other thing if I can help them help their customers make more money you know, then the leverage on the leverage. Now imagine if you had one customer who had 5,000 or 10,000 of your ideal customers. And instead of trying to sell that customer your product or service for internal use, you collaborated with that client and said, hey, how about we figure out a way to use my product, my service, my intellectual property to make your customers so much more money that they'll never leave you and they'll bring everybody they know because you're the only ones offering them that value proposition. Yeah. Okay? That's intellectual property in motion. And that's, you know, that's a value proposition that's almost irresistible for almost any company to, uh, to accept. So there's another example of how when you throw the box away and you stop thinking in terms of your product, your service, your issue, your cause, and you realize that each of us could be marketing currency, we could be customer capital, we could be profit improvement for our customers' customers and reach hundreds of thousands of people we'd never otherwise reach. So I wanted to really punctuate that because your point is well taken. You just need one contact who can put you in front of 10, 20, 30, 50, 100,000 people and you're off to the races. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And how, how do you advise people that are just starting out and just looking at uh, really monetizing their intellectual property, what do you what do you suggest to them in terms of first steps? You know, where do you go from um, where do you go from wherever you're at if you're just starting out? Uh, what's the next step? Okay, I actually have the exact same next step for everybody, whether they're just starting out or they're like me, 35 years in the game with hundreds of intellectual properties. There's actually two steps. The first step is to inventory your intellectual property, to inventory your, your, not just your products. You know, if you have a book, if you have an audio series, you know, if you're selling a hard good even, sometimes if you disassemble your product and you get back to the parts of the product, yeah. you find that there's pieces of the product that are more valuable than the overall product itself. And this is really especially true for the intellectual property knowledge worker. You know, speakers, authors, yeah. consultants, coaches, trainers like us who have a lot of knowledge-based intellectual property, expertise, things like that. So that's why our first coaching session at the IP Licensing Academy uh, was all about inventory and defining your intellectual property. And you know, every single person who was at that coaching session made a comment that they discovered they had intellectual property that they didn't know they had before because they had thought of everything in product form. You know, yeah. everything is a complete product. 
But with intellectual property, you can sell bits and pieces. I sold bits and pieces of stuff for more money than I sold the whole product. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because sometimes, you know, the, the, sometimes the, the, the parts are really greater than the sum. Sometimes the sum is greater than the part. So that's the first thing, is inventory and define. Yeah, it, go, it goes back to this overall picture here that we were talking about. That's overwhelming, you know, if, if you could just take a little tiny piece of intellectual property around one area of this, you know, you could have, uh, you know, uh, just countless ways that you could monetize intellectual property based on any one of these subjects. Yes, and let me give you step two, which is actually step one after you've done the inventory, okay? So call it step 1A. I, I tell people to make, and we have, we have documents for this. We help, like, guide worksheets. But here's what I would do if I were you right now. I would make three lists of ten. The first list of ten I make is the list of the ten people who love me the most and would literally do anything for me. Doesn't matter if they are potential customers, bought from me, never bought from me, friends, fans. The 10 people who would love you the most would do anything for you, and better if they're connected in some way to people who you want to go after. Okay, that's the first list of 10. They can yeah. make 20, but start with 10. The second list of 10 would be the 10 companies, businesses, clients, or, or individuals you've served who are your biggest fans and advocates, love you the most, because of a business relationship you have and would also do anything for you if you just ask, all right? Yep. And probably there's a good chunk of number of people on that list who you haven't asked. I know it's true for me and I know it's true for you and I know it's true for everybody who I've ever asked to make this list, okay? Then the third list of 10, this is your, like, um, you know, your hit list, so to speak. This is your dream list. These are the groups, organizations, companies who have as customers, not employees, who have as customers, constituents, uh, fans, whatever, community, the people who could best benefit from your intellectual property. A piece of it, a bundle of it, a particular product that's already in form, Okay? And, and these are companies that you either don't have a relationship with yet or would like to have a relationship with. That's the criteria there. Okay. Yep. So three lists. List the 10 people who love you. List the 10 businesses or business owners who love you, who you know, you've done the most for, and your dream list of 10 companies you want to go after. I am telling you without a question of a doubt, and it has never failed. It's worked 100% of the time. You have inside those 10 lists the connections you need, the relationships you need, the first two to get to the third. And I'll tell you this, the second group, each and every one of us has a ton more opportunity within the second group because there's nobody I know, including myself or you, Ken, has really maximized our relationship with our existing customers. Sure. Because our existing customers know tons of other people who we could serve. We just haven't really effectively leveraged that group. So those three groups, now you have everything you need. Uh, do an inventory of your IP, right? And now look and say, how can I approach these people? And one of the things I'm going to teach in San Diego is called rejection-proof networking. We, we did that at your JV Alert event last time. It's the three statements that you're going to get clear about so you can go talk to each group of these first two. What I do, why I do it, and who I'm looking for. Yeah. What I do, why I do it, and who I'm looking for. So, you know, that's your complete strategy. The rest is implementation and details. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So let's talk just for a couple of minutes uh, here, and then maybe we can open up and see if there are any questions at the end. But um, uh, let's talk a little bit about impact players and, and what that uh, process is, what that looks like. And uh, and what we're doing, you know, special for people, whether they can be in San Diego or not. And I I really want to emphasize this. This is not just for people who can make it to San Diego. Although we'd love to see you next Thursday in San Diego, that's for sure. Uh, and if you want to come, you can go uh, right now to 
uh, OneDayIntensive.com San Diego and uh, get the information on it. If you want to spend time with uh, Mitch and I on next Thursday, uh, we would love to have you there. But uh, even for people that are not able to be in San Diego, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing for impact players and, and, and kind of what the, the whole vision behind this is. Did you, did you want to jump in, Ken? Did we lose you? No, I'm, I'm here. Did you oh, hear me? Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay, I, I, so, um, you know, so I'll jump in with my version of it, and then obviously you can jump in with Sure, me. absolutely. Unless you, unless, unless you what, were you waiting for me? I just want to make sure we're <laughs> Well, I just want to give you uh, give you first shot at this, yeah, uh, because you have you have okay. your perspective, and and um, and uh, and then I'll jump in with uh, with my two cents, and then we'll let everybody jump in with their two cents. How's that? Yeah, the way I see it is really pretty simple. It's a way for you, Ken, to harness um, the amazing network of people that are inside the JV Alert family, your relationships, our relationships, and really to create what I would call like a think tank, you know, where we can all collaborate together and help each other to make a bigger impact in our profits, you know, and that's an area that I, I think we all, I know that's the number one objective, CEO, uh, there was a big CEO study, the number one objective of most companies right now in in every industry is business improvement, business growth and profit improvement. So being able to bring that conversation is critical and we all need that. So having that conversation amongst ourselves is always an ongoing value. The second thing was, you know, we really do have unbelievable intellectual property and this is a passion of mine because nothing has served me in my 35 years of business more in downtimes and uptimes than the confidence I have in the value of the six inches between my ears. You know, it's not easy to sell products and services. I'm pretty good at selling, but, you know, I'd, I'd much rather collaborate than sell. Yeah. And in the, in the IP game, it's, an, it's a collaborative game, and I know through collaboration with you and, and all of the people that would be part of this players group would be extraordinary, you know, and, and so it would have a huge impact on IP. And then the third piece of it is, is legacy. Yeah. Um, you know, even if, even if you're young and you're not thinking legacy, don't think legacy, think reach. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have opportunities to help each other reach more people uh, with our message. We all have ways in which we can hone our message to be more uh, listenable, if you will. So to me, this was really a chance for a you know, very modest contribution. And I said, you know what, I'm going to be the first guy in the game. I want to be the first player in the game because, you know, I'm a player. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to be a spectator in this game. I don't want to. I want to be a player. I want to be on the field. And so, you know, that's my take on it. And you know, we established a modest amount of money just to have people have skin in the game. Um, and then you and I would kind of facilitate it. But it's really, it's really a team effort. You know, so that's kind of how I envisioned it when, we, when you and I talked about it. Yeah. And you know, we decided to throw some of our content in there. But really, this is more about. You know, a think tank of people getting together at least once a month by phone, getting together for a day before JV Alert where it's possible, um, and sharing resources in a way that, you know, that people really find collaboration as, you know, the new game of capitalism, if you will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's really what it came from. It came from a realization um, at, at my level that, you know, we've got people that have been involved with JV Alert and the Impact Community, the the family that we've built together for going on a, a decade now, and uh, and having those people together over that long of a period of time. Um, you know, you need to shift the game. You need to to move the the everything up a notch. I think because as we mature and somebody's been in this business for you know a long time. We need to uh, start looking at more integrated ways that we can do a higher level offerings, uh, more time spent together doing collaborative kinds of things. And I want to make that available uh, to, to people that want to operate at that level. And so Impact Players is really about um, people that are really trying to build a solid business uh, that are trying to take things up, not 
not just one or two notches, but maybe 10 notches. And being able to have people like Mitch uh, who come to a very special uh, kind of an event and, and get to share uh, information that ordinarily, you know, um, it, it's been a long time since uh, Mitch has done, uh, you know, something like this where he's actually there for you uh, in, a, in a way that, that uh, is typically only available to his, his high-end clients and yet um, be able to uh, record that for people who are not going to be able to be there to get that information. We, I, I wanted to make it a total no-brainer for people whether they could be there or not. Uh, and then the ongoing aspect of the community, the live Facebook group that we're going to have just for impact players, and ongoing uh, things that we can't even talk about yet. But but uh, to make this just as clear a value as you could possibly imagine. And then, then of course, I'm also throwing in uh, two tickets to JB Alert Live, any future event. So whether you can be at this one uh, or you want to show up at JB Alert Live in Denver, uh, whichever event you want to, uh, to show up at, uh, would love to have you uh, come and be a part of that because there's no greater place to... Uh, have that networking that that really enables you to develop those lifetime relationships. Uh, it's just huge. So uh, we'd love to have any of you take part. Um, right now, there's only one way to uh, uh, get uh, access to these videos, uh, to be able to become part of the players group, and that's to go to onedayintensive.com forward slash San Diego and, and sign up there. It's only 4.97 for now. I don't know how long that uh, pricing will last uh, because we want to keep this a, a nice, uh, intimate group of people. But uh, for now, that's uh, what the pricing is, and you do get uh, the the full access to the recordings from this event, and you get access to uh, JV uh, uh, to the uh, special Facebook uh, private group. And um, and you also get tickets um, to future JB Alert live events. So that's a huge, huge value. I, you know, our tickets now for JB Alert live are at uh, 497, and that's the early bird uh, special price. So um, we hope that you'll take advantage of this, and uh, we hope that you'll be able to also uh, show up in San Diego because we'd love to spend time with you in person for sure. What else do I need to say, Mitch? What am I leaving out? Uh, well, I think uh, the conversation really is, uh, for me, the, the value is always in human interaction. Um, and there's not too many places where you can really you know, rub shoulders with people in, in an intimate setting. And as you said, you know, whether or not you can make San Diego, this isn't really an event-driven uh, relationship. You know, you and I plan to get on the phone at least once a month, and, you know, obviously this is for everyone. This is, uh, we're here to facilitate it. You know, and I know one thing, um, whenever I get together with colleagues, with, with people who are spiritually driven to be collaborative, you know, I like to say that the new game of business is a conscious, compassionate, collaborative, and creative game. Um, and I think we've become so systematic over the past number of years that we've lost sight of why we're actually playing the game to begin with. And I know it's been easy for me to lose sight of that. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm back into that place where I'm really here to, to serve in a massive way and to learn from other people and to, to count on other people. So I think a big part of this is the, you know, the family atmosphere of you know, don't join this if you're just coming to take something because that's not really the game we're playing. The game we're playing here is that, you know, it, it's a give and take. You know, a lot of us are really good at giving, but we're not really good at receiving. I know that's something I have to learn. So part of this for me is, you know, I'm a natural giver. I need to learn how to ask. I need to learn how to receive. I'll bet a few of, you know, our friends are in the same boat. Yeah. You know, so this to me is a real give and take, give and take. And the more you give and take, the more you get the more you give, you know, the bigger the pie grows. So, um, you know, I would like to say just in closing that, you know, I, I have a couple of business philosophies. Number one is I try to work with people I can hug. 
because yeah. I like to work with people I can hug. But most of all, I want to work with people who are as thrilled to work with me as I am to work with them. Yeah. And it, I've always used that as kind of a yardstick. And let's face it, you know, when times get tough, we all make <laughs> concessions and we all bend the rules a little bit. But over the 35 years, I can honestly say, you know, I can count them on, on two hands at most. The number of people I've worked with, which, you know, left really a horrible taste in my mouth, have been fortunate. And I think we all like that. So I think we're trying to attract people who would be as thrilled to participate with us as we would be to participate with you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I hope this has been useful to you. I hope you've gained a few insights that you can use, whether or not you decide uh, to uh, participate with us in the Impact Players um, either way, I hope that you've gotten value out of this. I know Mitch gave some great, great content. If you didn't find some nuggets in there, <laughs> you need to uh, get the the recording of this call and then uh, really go back through it because there were some real nuggets inside there, uh, things that you can use in your business today. Um, I hope uh, everybody takes an active part in all of the events that are coming up, JV Alert Live, the webcast series. Uh, if you can possibly attend these things, I think you can get some great value. Got exciting stuff coming up every single day. Uh, more and more people, as I, as I delve down deep, uh, redesign everything that I've worked with and really try to up the value that we can give you uh, every single day. I think you're going to be in, in line for a great adventure. I hope that you'll do it with Mitch and I, and I hope that you'll have a wonderful, impactful life and go out there and do the good stuff. So um, if I can do anything for you, you let me know. If you want to learn more about me, you can learn more at KenMacArthur.com. And if you want to learn about Mitch, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you, Mitch? Uh, you can go to MitchAxelrod.com, which is uh, my blog. There's a whole lot of good stuff there and there's video and reports and all kinds of good stuff you can get there so mitchaxelrod.com and if you'd like to participate with us in the impact players program of course go to one day intensive.com forward slash san diego it's the only way to get in right now and we'd love to see you Everybody have a great day. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Mitch Axelrod. You are always amazing, and it's great to spend time with you. Thank you, Ken. Talk soon.